Good morning, yogis. How are you today? This is my second video that I'm doing, and this one's a little bit shorter. Maybe something to do first thing in the morning, or maybe something to do um, at night right before you're getting to, to go to bed. So my name's Terry Jackson. I've been a yoga instructor for about eight years now, and I'm also a Reiki master. Okay, so let's get started. A couple things I always like to point out to people on your yoga mat, just remember, this is just your space, okay? So you're not competing with your neighbor. Um, don't get intimidated by the mat. Sometimes people like to say, well, I can't do this, I can't do that. Fear about doing something new, particularly if this is a new class for you. Fear about doing those things, it has no, no place in your mind, really. You know, we weren't born with fear. That's something that's learned a lot later on in life. So, or maybe earlier in life. Okay, so just, this is your space. You're working on just your, your rhythm, your heart. You're really, really working in yoga to learn to speak from your heart. Speaking from your heart, listening to your heart, listening to your intuition. This helps open this up. This helps roll the shoulders back. You know, remember if we have life scars, which we all do, we kind of have a tendency to do this. Does not great things for the spine, does not great things for the hips, makes tension in the um, organs, so, which means you get sick. Okay, so that's what we're, that's what, not what we're doing here. Always beautiful, radiant, loving heart. Loving for your neighbors, love for yourself. So this is the control center for absolutely everything we do. Brain, glad we have it, fantastic. Lots of chatter goes on up here, lots of distraction goes on here. So oftentimes in yoga, things in life may change, taste might be different, sound might be different. So focus on our heart. We're doing lots of movement with rhythm. So we're coming back to our born rhythm. Oftentimes, just because we have to, whether it's work, family, etc., we have to adjust our rhythm a little bit. Um, over a long period of time, unless we get ourselves recentered into our own great rhythm, um, it throws us off, you know, so you get too tired, you don't understand why, etc., etc. Okay, some technical things. Hands. We always place the hands two inches from the top of the mat. That's our, that's our forward future area. If your hands are back here, you're hanging out in the past. We're moving forward. Healthy moving forward forward. Also, if you get get moving too far back, then you're going to walk off the back of your mat. So remember, this is your heart island. Let's call it that for today. Okay. So middle finger, fantastic middle finger, is placed always at 12 o'clock. There's a good reason why. So at 12 o'clock, this prevents us from putting too much torque onto the wrist. So if the fingers come in, fingers roll out, you're putting too much torque on the wrist and too much on the, on the elbow. We also grip like little tiny claws. When I was um, getting my license initially, it took me a long time to build this strength into my fingers. So if you can't do it on the first class, it's okay. So remember, if you're moving that weight to the fingers, then you're taking this weight off of the, the wrist area. So this, uh, the heel of the hand. So this is, that's cool. Okay, great, feet, fabulous feet. Five toes, five toes. Five senses pushing into the earth. So when we're working with the feet, we're gripping with the toes. If you're just pushing with the two, the main toe, the big toe, has a tendency to roll then just the heel, the ankle, the knee, the knee in, and then the hip. So then everything is kind of out of whack. So you'll hear me say, grip with the toes, grip with the toes. That throws us right back into our balance. That's like in mountain pose, you're really standing there, toes are gripped in, heels are pushing right there into the earth. You've got that beautiful long line of what I call the golden spine and um, that keeps us super, super centered, grounded, always open. Okay, so let's get started sitting. We're going to start just with some breathing exercises first because the breathing exercises takes this whole TV up here and starts to close it down. 
if there's still too much chatter going on up here, I gotta do this, I gotta do that. Softly close the eyes. That closes that little TV screen of all the stimulation that goes on around us. Then we're gonna start to pay attention to our breath which comes from the nose, lips are gently closed, air comes down to the belly, okay? Not our little tiny, little short um, panting breaths that we carry up here in the top of the lungs. So air comes all the way in, oxygen, circulation, stimulation, exhaling back out through the nose. And so you're taking heat back out, so out, of, the, out of the body, resting the palms down, or feeling more open, palms can be up. Um, let's just talk a quick moment for the chakras. So I love to talk about the spine because the spine is where everything sort of happens, the heart and the spine. I call it the golden spine. So we're rooted from the tailbone, the grounding first chakra, chakra quite frankly, and then coming all the way up through the top of the head, the crown chakra. So I just see this as one big, golden long thread of energy or long thread of light. It's always kind of a nice feeling. So if we're getting a concern, we start to feel like doing this. Just open, roll back. Remember, ta-da, radiant heart. That's what we want to see. All right, so let's get started. So hands are down or palms are up and then just start to Breathing through the nose, down into the belly. Relax the shoulders. We want lots of space between the ears and the top of the shoulders. Good, keep breathing. And now tip the right ear to the right shoulder. We're stretching the left side of the neck. Keep breathing. And then change left ear to left shoulder. And then right ear to the right shoulder. Keep breathing. Left ear to the left shoulder. Keep breathing, quiet mind. Pay attention to the heart. Okay, chin comes down to the chest. Stretching from the middle of the back or the back of the heart up to the crown. And then chin goes all the way up to the sun. Relax the jaw. Take the tongue, push it to the roof of the mouth, opening up this throat chakra. Speaking, sore throats, who are you not speaking to, okay? Chin comes all the way down. Chin comes all the way up. Chin comes all the way down. Great, head comes right back here to level. Right hand goes to the left knee, soft turn to the left. Now remember, we're waking up the spine. And so if you can only turn a half an inch, that's fine. Just go to where it's comfortable. If it's not comfortable at all, just sit this one out. That's fine. No worries. Great. Back to center, reaching all the way up to the ceiling. Now we're not doing this. We're keeping the shoulders down. Palms are facing, elbows are by the ears. Okay. Reaching. Soft turn to the left. And you're not picking up the right hip. Soft turn to the right. Excellent. Great, back to center, bend the right elbow, right fingertips go down the back, left hand holds onto the right elbow. Long, beautiful spine. Great, change. Listening to your breath. Good, waking up those shoulder sockets. Okay, one side of the body may be a little stiffer than the other, no worries. Okay, release, come to all fours, cat cow. Cat cow, another fantastic one for the spine. Okay, so gripping the fingers, toes curled under, head down, eyes are looking right here at the thighs. Good, sucking the belly in, tuck the tailbone under, pushing. Inhale. Exhale, cow, long stretch, eyes go up to the ceiling. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, push that spine up, inhale, exhale. I grew up on a ranch and this is really what cows do. Inhale, exhale. Good, back to center, our diagonal stretch now, okay? 
Right hand, left leg. Keep breathing. Looking forward. And then change. Left hand, right leg. We're on the same plane, the arm and the leg. Great, okay, left hand comes down, resting on the left forearm, rolling the right arm underneath, roll to the right shoulder, and breathe. We're just stretching out that arm. And then change. Again, pay attention to your spine. If this is too much pressure, then don't do it. Super, back to center. Child's pose, beautiful stretch is child's pose. Knees are on the edge of the mat, they're not in the center. Many times people put their knees into the center, then you can't get your chest down. Third eye comes to the middle of the mat, forehead down, walk the fingertips forward, keep breathing. The arms aren't down, elbows are up. Great. And now walk the hands to the right. Pushing the left hip away, long stretch. Walk the hands over to the left, bending, honoring east and west. Back into center, stretching. Great, now bring yourself into downward facing dog. Now remember, if you're not so used to downward facing dog, just take your time with it. All 10 toes are pushing down, sliding the shoulder blades back, gripping with the fingers. Walk the feet back one foot, glide into plank, holding into plank, three points, knees, chest, chin, touching, Coming into baby cobra, point the toes. Remember, we're waking up the back. Inhale, exhale, gliding yourself all the way back to downward facing dog. Pushing the knuckles in, keep breathing. Walk the feet back one more time. Rolling into plank, lowering yourself all the way down. Clasp the hands behind the back, point the toes, gently pick up the torso. Okay, this is a heart opener. Inhale, exhale, bring the forehead down. Bending the knees, hang on to the ankles. If you can't reach the ankles, don't worry about it. And now push up. Super, exhale down. Glide yourself all the way back to child's pose again. And breathe. Super, okay, now come into hero pose. Hero pose is fantastic for the digestion. So we're sitting onto the toes, all right? So they're curled this way, five toes, five senses, resting the palms right here onto the thighs. So hero pose, also called screaming toe pose for obvious reasons. We're stretching out the feet, okay? Also, you're working on digestion. So if you've had too much to eat, this is a great pose to just sit and relax in for just a bit. Okay, center line of the body. Beautiful, open, loving heart. Shoulders roll back and breathe. Okay, seated forward bend. Now, you can do it two ways. Sweep your legs around if you're paying attention to the knees. What I do is I gently cross the ankles, roll back. Okay, so pull the flesh out from underneath your bum, your sit bones. Your legs are straight <coughs> and your feet are flexed, but the knees are always soft. So we don't want to be locking these knees. Okay, that also blocks energy. You've got meridians that come up through the body, arms, we want to keep everything super loving, super flowing. All right, arms go up to the ceiling, and we're reaching forward. It's not a bend. Reaching, fold, 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 look forward, hang on to the balls of the feet. If you can't, rest the hands onto the shins, perfectly fine, okay? My mom's 91, she can get her chest onto her thighs. I'm not there yet. Okay, great. 
keep breathing. Super. Bend the right leg, right sole of the foot comes as high up the leg as you can. All right, so it's to the inside of the left thigh. Left foot is continuing to flex. So we're stretching the, the hamstring, okay, iliopsoas. And then left arm rests to the inside of the left leg. We're rolling the torso, sweeping the right hand over the top of the head, reaching to the outside edge of the foot. Great, and then change. I love this because this is really a hip opener. So we're sweeping over. If you just can do this, this is fine. Now remember, torso is not doing this. It's doing this. We're rolling to the side wall, opening up this hip. Super important that we're doing that. We carry anger, fear, tension in our hips. So if you've got sore hips, get rid of what's hanging on up here. Okay, sweeping the left hand over and breathe. Gorgeous, awesome. All right, straighten the legs, point the toes, hands are on the mat, right? Fingertips are pointing forward, point the toes, push up, tip the head back. This builds beautiful arms too. If you can't do any other yoga position, you can do this and just build beautiful arms. Point, point, point those toes. Great, resting on the sit bones, legs come up. Lots of tummy work. Helps with keeping that lower back strong. Boat pose. Palms are facing. Chest up. Good. Relax. Down coming into Matsyasana fish. Resting on the elbows. Palms down. You're pushing the chest up to the ceiling. The spine does not touch the mat. Breathe, and now lower yourself all the way down onto the mat, coming into the lightning rod pose, or what I call. So pretend you're like a rose quartz wand. Sweep the arms over the top of the head. You're stretching the fingertips. The arms aren't on the floor. They're hovering about an inch above. So this makes this whole torso, heart, always coming back to loving heart, open, very super vulnerable, okay? so. Sweeping the hands over the head, point, point, point the toes. Good. Bring the arms up. Roll the hands in big circles to the right. We're just taking pressure out of those wrists. Change. Point and flex, point and flex, point and flex. Rest the hands down by the side. Now bring the legs up to the ceiling. Flex the feet, same thing. Rolling these feet, big circles. Always being grateful for our feet. So we like to take good care of them. Balance, stability, everything happens in those feet. Point flex, flex, open legs wide. Hands come to the inside of the thighs. Push those legs open. Again, this is your own pace, your own flexibility. Coordinating right and left side of the body, coordinating right and left side of the brain. Bend the knees, hang on to the ankles, push the feet together, toes are lined up. Gorgeous spine, long. Keep breathing. Release the hands, wrap the hands around the shins. We don't hang on to the knees, just the shins. Hug into the chest, rock side to side, massaging the spine. This is another one to do if you have a lot of tension, you don't have a lot of time to work it out. You know, you can lie down, do child's pose, roll back into this. Feels amazing. Okay, knees are bent, feet are on the floor, hands are down by the side, gripping the toes. We don't want the ankles to roll in. Push the hips up to the ceiling, keep breathing. Clasp the hands behind the back, the weights in the shoulders, not the neck. A little extra stretch, pick the heels up. Should feel super in the lower back. Good, heels down, release the hands, 
Lower the hips back down, hug those shins back into the chest again, massage, massage the spine, or the back of the heart as I call it. Massage, good. Knees are still bent, feet are onto the ground, the feet are touching, knees are touching, arms are out into a big T shape. Now remember the palms are just not flopping out there. They're pushing into the ground, okay? Super, turn the head to the left, Walk the legs to the right, or to the left. Roll the knees to the right. So the right knee is touching the ground. The left knee is resting on the right calf. Left shoulder, left ear. Again, another beautiful diagonal stretch across the whole body. And breathe. If you can only go part way, fine. This is your practice. There's no competition here, right? And then roll to the other side. Walk the feet to the right, roll the knees to the left, turn the head to the right, pressing with the fingers. Super. Great, and then coming into our last cool down, we're hugging the, chin, the shins into the chest again. And breathe. Coming back into our long lightning rod stretch again. Super vulnerable, loving radiant heart stretch with those arms. Imagine sparkles, golden sparkles coming out of the fingers, golden sparkles out of the toes. Relax that throat, third eye. Wide open, that's your wisdom point. Great, and then final Shavasana. Now this is where you look like starfish. This is great, okay? So the arms are open wide, feet are open wide. You're just melting into the mat. Total quiet with your brain. You're listening to the breath come down into the belly. Exhale out. Heart, that's all that happens in Shavasana. It also happens to be one of the most difficult positions because then sometimes the ego starts on a chat chat. So breathing, erasing. Shavasana is vulnerable, so sometimes in class, I'll see some students after we've been in an hour class, they're all tense like little soldiers at the end of class. So, you know, I talk to them later, relax, open. It's all okay to keep this open. It really is super relaxing and healthy. Okay, so we stay here for a few minutes or you stay here as long as you want. Generally in class at this time, I go around, I work with oils, do a little Reiki aromatherapy on each one of the students. Now we roll. But generally, it's to the right because of today we roll to the left, starting to wake ourselves back up again. Gently bring ourselves all the way up to sitting. Super, coming right to the end of class. And so at this point, now we're working. Blood is flowing, circulation, loving heart is always radiant i always try to see the heart is like the heart with a big smile on it with huge sun rays around it okay rubbing the palms together this brings energy into these palms okay you can feel the heat super okay cupping over the front of the face so what we're doing is bringing this loving radiant energy right there into that third eye and continue to breathe remember throats relaxed Shoulders are relaxed, golden spine. This all becomes just second nature over time. Great, and now lightly start with the tapping. Tap, 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 tapping. Releases a little extra of tension you might have not dumped during class. There's lots of books written about tapping. It's an amazing topic. They've done so much in the medical world holistic world with tapping, particularly with kids. Communication center, collarbone, out to the, your wings, as I like to call them, out to the tips of the shoulders, up the back of the spine, the atlas. Tap, 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 right up to that crown chakra. Now bring the fingers, a thumb, middle finger. We're pinching from the top of the ear all the way down to the earlobe. Now immediately you'll feel this relaxation. So if you're also someplace, you know, Thanksgiving dinner with the family, whatever, people are making you a little wonky in the head, you know, you can kind of secretly start to pinch 
the ear, that all of a sudden sort of brings us down grounded. The ears have, have hundreds of acupressure, acupuncture points in them. So another great topic, go online, take a look. Fabulous healing things go on with those ears. Pinch, 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 pinch. Okay, still remembering the heart. We're gonna come into doing our O. So whether you're right or left-handed, that's your prominent hand, I'm right-handed. Rubbing the hands together, we're holding on to the heart. So you want to feel that vibration of the ohm into the heart. Usually at this time I, pay, I play music that's related to the chakras and the, and the organs. So it's really a wonderful way to relax and kind of clear toward the end of, of my classes. All right, so we're hanging on to the heart. Huge breath. Remember, we're taking that breath to the belly, not the little tiny short ones. Okay, big inhale. Bring the hands into Namaste. The thumbs, again, touching the heart. We touch the heart all the time. Don't protect that heart, not a good thing. Okay, touching the heart. Eyes softly close, breath into the belly, remembering that we're all teachers, that we're kind, we're loving, we're compassionate, we're empathetic. Always remember to honor water, honor nature, also forgive those who hurt our feelings. Most importantly, be kind, loving, and helpful to people who need us. Namaste. Namaste.